Good morning, boys and girls, or afternoon. I don't know what time of day you're watching and listening to this story. Um, but we are going to continue reading The Riverbank, Part 2. This is Chapter 2 of The Wind in the Willows. We're starting by looking at our map because it will give us a lot of information about our story and how our setting changes as we go through the entire story. We started out in Mole's house. Mole came out of his house. He saw a rat's house. And then they got in their little boat and they are traveling down the river. So let's go back up to the very beginning and take a look at our story again just to make sure we remember. Here's dear little Mole. Oops, sorry. I'm going to struggle. Okay. Dear little mole started out in his house. Do you remember what he was doing? Spring cleaning. Did he love it? No. He gave up. He sort of quit and he said, I'm done with it. Maybe he was done with it, but it sounded as though he just put it away and said, I'm going out and it was spring. He started to meander around the riverbank and he met a new friend. He met Rat who immediately invited him into his boat to take him on a trip and he's teaching, Rat is teaching Mole all about the world that Mole is unfamiliar with. So here we're going to begin chapter two. Um, before we do that, before I begin to read, I want to make sure that you are listening really carefully to um, ways that Mole learns about life on the river. And he learns about that by speaking to Rat. Um, we call this part of the story when characters speak back and forth to one another, we call that dialogue. And how do you know when you're reading dialogue in a story? Hmm. You know that you're reading dialogue because dialogue has quotation marks around it. The exact words that a character says is put in quotation marks. Dialogue is one way that an author can describe a person or a place or a thing or give the reader information in a story. There's another part of a story that tells what's happening and does not have quotation marks around it. So it's not dialogue. And that would be narration. So you can have a narrated part of the story where someone is just telling you what's happening, or you can learn about what's going on in the story through dialogue. Narration and dialogue are two literary tools or two ways that an author tells a story. Um, we just talked about the setting and through whose eyes do we first discover this riverbank? Well, we first discover the riverbank through Mole's perspective. Please say the word perspective with me. Perspective. Perspective is how someone sees or experiences something. In fictional stories, perspective is another literary tool, like dialogue and narration, and it lets the reader know from whose experience the scene of the story is mainly being described. Like dialogue, Perspective can shift from one character to another as a way of telling more about the story. So in Mole's house, you remember his actions and dialogue that the entire story begins is being told from Mole's perspective. And the reader first hears about the above ground world and the riverbank from Mole's perspective. Well, we're going to be introduced to another character today. It's an otter. So when don't be surprised when you see the otter. Otters are playful creatures. They're great swimmers. They're part of the weasel family. They're semi-aquatic, which means they spend time in and out of the water like water rats. They have brownish fur, cream-colored bellies, long, strong necks, webbed feet, and long, flattened tails. They live in burrows. They eat fish, shellfish, birds. Didn't know that. Insects and frogs. Otters have backbones. Their skeletons are inside their bodies. They are warm-blooded, 
They are mammals, which means their babies are born alive and their mothers feed them milk from their own bodies. Well, today in the read aloud, Rat and Mole were just getting ready to go on a picnic to the backwater. So, hmm, predict what kind of adventures Roll, Mole and Rat might have on their backwater. And then listen to see if that prediction is true. Leaving the main stream, they now passed into what seemed like a little landlocked lake. Green grass sloped down to either edge. Brown, snaky tree roots gleamed below the surface of the quiet water. Ahead of them could be heard the foamy tumble of a weir with a restless dripping mill wheel attached to a mill house. The scene was so beautiful that Mole could only hold up both forepaws and gasp. <gasps> oh my! The rat brought the boat alongside the bank and tied it up. Then he helped the still awkward Mole safely ashore and swung out the luncheon basket. Why would Mole still be awkward? Well, because it was his first time in a boat. The rat was very pleased to indulge him when the Mole asked to be allowed to unpack the luncheon basket all by himself. Mole excitedly shook out the tablecloth and spread it, and then one by one, he took out the mysterious packets and carefully arranged them, still gasping, oh my, oh my. When all was ready, the rat said, eat up, old fellow. And the mole, who had started his spring cleaning at a very early hour and had not eaten since then, eagerly set to work. What are you looking at? said the rat presently, when the edge of their hunger was somewhat dulled and the mole's eyes were able to wander off the tablecloth. I am looking, said the mole, at a streak of bubbles that I see traveling along the surface of the water. Bubbles? Oh, said the rat cheerily. A broad glistening muzzle showed itself above the edge of the bank and the otter hauled himself out and shook the water from his coat. Greedy beggars, he observed. Why didn't you invite me, Ratty? Well, this was a spontaneous affair, explained the rat. By the way, meet my friend, Mr. Mole. Proud, I'm sure, said the otter, and the two animals were friends forthwith. Such a rumpus everywhere, continued the otter. The entire world seems to be out on the river today. I came up this backwater to try to get a moment's peace and then stumbled upon you fellows. At that moment, there was a rustling sound behind them. It seemed to come from a hedge wherein last year's leaves still clung. Seconds later, a stripy head with high shoulders peered out from within. Come on, old badger, shouted the rat. The badger trotted forward and then grunted, hmm, company, and turned his back and disappeared from view. That's just the sort of fellow he is observed the disappointed rat. Simply hates society. Now we shan't see any more of him today. Hmm. Well, tell us, who's out on the river? Toad's out for one, replied the otter, in his brand new wager boat. New togs, new everything. The two animals looked at each other and laughed. Once it was nothing but sailing, said the rat, and then he tired of that and took to punting. Nothing would please him but to punt all day. Last year it was houseboating, and we all had to go and stay with him in his houseboat and pretend we liked it. It's all the same. Whatever he takes up, he gets tired of and starts on something fresh. So a wager boat, a sailing boat, a punting boat, houseboat are all types of boats, but it doesn't sound as though rat is, or excuse me, Toad is staying with something for very long. Such a good fellow too, remarked the otter reflectively, but no stability, especially in a boat. From where they sat, they could get a glimpse of the main stream across the island that separated them. And just then a wager boat flashed into view. The rower was a short, stout figure who was splashing badly and rolling a good deal, but working his hardest. The rat stood up and hailed him. However, Toad, for it was he, 
shook his head and concentrated on the task at hand. He'll be out of that boat in a minute if he rolls like that, said the rat. Of course he will, chuckled the otter. Did I ever tell you that good story about Toad and the lock keeper? The story happened this way, Otter continued. Toad, and, and at that moment, a mayfly swerved unsteadily on the gentle spring breeze toward Otter. There was a swirl of water and a cloop, and the mayfly was visible no more. Neither was the Otter. Mayflies are insects sort of like dragonflies and damselflies that live near water. They live just for a few hours for a few days. And guess who eats mayflower? Mayflies. You're right, otter does. <laughs> the mole looked down. That voice was still in his ears, but the grass whereon he had sprawled was clearly vacant, not an otter to be seen. But again, there was a streak of bubbles on the surface of the river. The rat hummed a tune, and the mole remembered that it was considered rude to make any sort of comment about the sudden disappearance of one's friends. Well, well, said the rat, I suppose we ought to be moving. I wonder which one of us should pack the luncheon basket. He did not sound overly eager to do it himself. Oh, please let me, said the mole. So, of course, the rat let him. The afternoon sun was getting low as the rat sculled gently homeward. The mole was very full of lunch and self-satisfaction and already quite at home in a boat, or so he thought. He was, however, getting a bit restless, and presently he said, Ratty, please, I want to row now. Rat shook his head with a smile. Not yet, my young friend, he said. Wait till you've had a few lessons. The mole was quiet for a minute or two, but he began to feel more and more jealous of Rat. Suddenly, he jumped up and seized the skulls from him. Rat, who had been gazing out over the water, was taken by surprise. He fell backwards off his seat. The triumphant mole took his place and grabbed the skulls with much confidence. Stop it, you silly, cried the rat from the bottom of the boat. You'll have us over. The mole flung his skulls back with a flourish and made a great dig at the water. He missed the surface altogether. His legs flew up over his head and he found himself lying on the top of the rat. Greatly alarmed, he made a grab for the side of the boat and the next moment, sploosh. Oh dear. Over went the boat and Mole found himself struggling in the water. Oh my, how cold the water was and oh, how very wet it felt how it sang in his ears as he went down, down, down. How bright and welcome the sun looked as he rose to the surface, coughing and spluttering. How black was his despair when he felt himself sinking again. Then a firm paw gripped him by the back of his neck. It was the rat, and he was laughing. The rat got hold of the skull and shoved it under the mole's arm, and then he did the same with the other side of him and, swimming behind, propelled the helpless animal to shore. When the rat had rubbed him down and wrung some of the wet out of him, he said, Now then, old fellow, trot up and down till you're warm and dry again, while I dive for the luncheon basket. So, the dismal mole, wet without and ashamed within, trotted about till he was fairly dry while the rat plunged into the water again. He recovered the boat, fetched his floating property, and finally dived successfully for the luncheon basket. When all was ready to begin again, the mole, limp and dejected, took his seat at the stern of the boat, and as they set off, he said in a low voice, Ratty, my generous friend, I am very sorry indeed for my foolish behavior. My heart quite fails me when I think how I might have lost that beautiful luncheon basket. I have been a fool. Will you ever forgive me? That's all right. Bless you, responded the rat cheerily. What's a little water? What's a little wet to a water rat? I'm more in the water than out of it most days. Don't you think any more about it. And look here. I really think you had better come and stop 
with me for a little time. My home is very plain and rough, but I am sure I can make you comfortable, and I'll teach you to row and to swim. The mole was so touched by his kindness that he had to brush away a tear. But the rat kindly looked in another direction, and before long the mole's spirits revived again. When they got home, the rat made a bright fire in the parlor. He planted the mole in an armchair in front of it. He fetched, a, fetched down a dressing gown and slippers for him and told him river stories till supper time. Supper was a most cheerful meal. Shortly afterwards, a sleepy mole had to be escorted upstairs to, by his host to the best bedroom. There, he laid his head on his pillow in great peace and contentment. This was just the beginning of their friendship and time together on the river. And that's the end of our reading for today, but I do want to ask you some questions. Were your predictions correct about what kind of adventures mole and rat might have on that backwater? Maybe some of them were correct, but maybe some of it was new information. Think about what is perspective. Do you remember? We talked about it before the story. Perspective is the experience or the eyes of the character through which a part of the story is told. And from whose perspective is today's read aloud told? Do we hear the story from Mole's perspective or from Rat's perspective? We hear it from Mole's perspective. What new characters appeared in today's read aloud? Otter. We met Otter and talked with him. We saw a Toad, although we haven't talked with Toad yet. And Badger. Very brief Badger visit. Um, so. The main characters are Water Rat and Mole still, but other characters are Otter, Toad, and Badger. We'll learn more about them later. Uh, Mole learns some about Toad through dialogue between Rat and Otter. Remember he was just laying there listening as uh, Rat and Otter spoke about Toad? How did they describe Toad? He was a good fellow, but he was easily bored. He went from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. And he had no stability. He just really did not stay stable. Why does Mole suddenly jump up and seize the skulls or oars? Well, Mole was jealous and he was prideful for a moment and he wants to show Rat that he can row just as well as Rat can. Do you remember what you call the part of the story that's not dialogue? It's called narration. So we have narration and dialogue that help an author tell a story. What happens when Mole seizes those oars? The boat flips over, they end up in the water, Mole can't swim. It's a good thing Rat is there to help him to safety. Is Rat angry with the dejected Mole? No, he, Matt, Rat is really a good guy. How do you know he is not angry? Well, Rat is laughing as he helps Mole to safety. Rat speaks cheerily to Mole. He doesn't have an angry voice. He arranges for Mole to come to his house. And Rat escorts Mole to the very best bedroom. Wow, we will talk some about this friendship that Rat and Mole are developing in the next story.